I can't see you think, Jim. Well, hold on. I swear, it's always some damn thing. Wait, got it. Ah, oh, hell, this thing ain't gonna hold. Shut up. Damn, you're ugly. You girls strapped in nice and tight now. Hatter, your mama <laughs> That's a good one, man. you got for me out there, Joey Ray? We got terror for sure. I don't know about the rest. We got a big old buttload of floating debris out here. <laughs> we hit Vader this time for sure. Explain to me how we're gonna get all this home. I'm detached and moving toward the derelict spacecraft. Damn it, Jim. Video's out again. Well, quit picking at it. I ain't picking at it, damn it. I'm out here with a hint of my gun. Hey, up in here and there. I'm in your deck. I'm in your deck. I'm in your deck. I'm in your deck. That's how StarCraft starts. Well, the intro at least. This is a game I played a lot as a kid. Like, uh, oh, like days, like um, for a couple of years at the very least I spent just about every day I could just sitting down here and playing this. And not even playing the campaign, although I did play a fair bit of that. Uh, what I did was mostly played around in multiplayer, I just dicked around on that building bases. I, I suck at the combat, or the uh, the actual, you know, real-time strategy bits of the RTS. But I was really good at building bases. And I wanted to go back to this, because, um... Well, I've been meaning to do it anyway, because I really wanted to play it. And it's a fun game. It's a fun as hell game. But, uh, something actually happened recently, is that Blizzard, uh, decided we're gonna remaster it. I'm not playing that remaster, mind you, because, well, they're charging money for that. But the original StarCraft is free. So yeah, you, that is that is available to download. I'll be linking that in the description because, fuck it, it's a good game. If you, if this is the only episode of this you watch, this, then I don't mind because go play the game first and come back and watch this because I got some thoughts on it. I I don't actually wait. It's good that they have it free for download. But I just want to point out I'm looking at the uh, at, at the original StarCraft disc right here. That's what, actually what I've got it. Well, I tried to install it on that. It was playing a little bit funny with that, and just when eventually went with the free download, but it's weird. But yeah, I do have the original disc, and that's cool. Little badge of honor. <laughs> so let's hop into a single player here. And I'll keep chattering while we do the tutorial. Actually, no. So, this is the, uh, the triumvirate of races here. Right off the bat, well, this is really cool. Tells you you're supposed to do this one first here, because there is a story of this game. This is a major improvement over uh, over Warcraft 2, which admittedly had a story. It sure did have a story. Yep. But this one actually, they gave a shit about the story, and it was actually they put work into it. I really like all the little little uh, cool things here on the sides here, like all the little. Little scans of stuff. And I believe a cutscene is going to start up as soon as we kick into here, so let's go. Right. 
not a cutscene. We got this. Okay. I like how it starts off as being like a this is a space sim kind of thing. Is this gonna? Okay, there we go. The mm, this effect of this screen is a little bit ruined with Welcome when it cuts off like that. Magistrate. The equipment demonstration you requested is prepared and may be initiated at your convenience. Simply select Start to begin the demonstration. You may skip the demonstration by selecting Skip Tutorial. The T-280 SCV is the cornerstone of our hostile environment construction and resource gathering operations. Roger that. In order to build a thriving colony, numerous SCVs are necessary. You can build additional SCVs at a command center. It's sensitive a little bit. But, uh, yeah. No, hang on, that's actually... Mouse no, scroll did nothing. Sensitivity of a bit. It's a, they actually do it a little bit confusing. Uh, Warcraft 2 had the same thing where you uh, you move the mouse over there. And Starcraft, you can never really disable it, but yeah. I thought the update was supposed to make it so I could. Oh, I hope it doesn't include the letterboxing. In order to equip additional personnel, you must have enough supply depots to support them. You can use SCVs to build additional supply depots. I'm gonna look into fixing the letterboxing while this kind of. Uh, after this episode, I think. But I mostly just wanted to get this out of the way. So, um, yeah, so this is a really interesting game. It's like. Um, well, one way I've always kind of thought of it it's like aliens. Aliens. Although, you know, that is not too much difference between the first one and the second one, like, setting-wise. In Except everyone in it is a space Australian hillbilly. Not even kidding. Commander. Basically, the way this works, uh, the, the backstory of the game is that humanity got kicked off to the sector, and kicked off to this distant part of the universe called the Caprulu Sector. Our stockpile of minerals has run out. And uh, who they sent out there wasn't actually you know, colonists or anyone. Command on the crystals to collect more minerals. Yeah, I'll just right click. Right click does everything in this game. <laughs> but um, yeah, so the harvest eight at a time, which I like. So uh, yeah, so basically instead of sending colonists or scientists or basically any of those, what they decided to do is instead we're we're gonna send ships of a bunch of. Uh, we're going to send ships of uh, dangerous space convicts out there to do the colonization for us. Because they're expendable. Which has resulted in a ridiculously a ridiculously aggressive... Standard, you know, there's, here's, here's a small map. Here, there's some enemies scattered around. Go ahead and explore. So, yeah, so it results in this ridiculously aggressive uh, colony group that just doesn't really know how to build anything properly. And has, instead of scientists, they have mad scientists, essentially, that have been convicted of crazy crimes. All Marines are hyper aggressive lunatics in power armor filled with stim packs. Just stim to the nines and cybernetically enhanced. Uh, the SCVs don't really have anything. Don't really have anything odd about them because you know, there's workers. Commander. And you have their descendants. So you have just this culture of it's a really interesting kind of. But like I said, it's essentially space Australia. 
I remember them being smarter than this. Um. Yeah. Let's move. And this is how it started. This is how it started. I'll, I'll probably. I'm gonna play through to uh, to Heart of the Swarm at least. Starcraft 2 Heart of the Swarm because that's the one I own. I don't own the Protoss one just yet. My interest is mostly Heart of the Swarm because I'm a Zerg player. But, uh. Yeah, I'm mostly just gonna be going through and I'll have some thoughts about that when we get there. But for now, let's just talk about the first game. Let's move. Another thing I like is that it shows, like, there's no point to it, but I like how it shows all the individual parts of the character in the wireframe, and uh, all the bits of their anatomy. Like, uh, oh, their arm's damaged, that leg's damaged. Again, it doesn't actually mean anything, it's just basically flavor text, but it's really cool. I don't think... Like, psion like, psionic damage doesn't only damage the head or anything like that. It really is just like, oh, if they're damaged this... If they are if they have this much HP missing, this part is damaged. I think it's chest and leg first or something like that, but I don't know. But yeah, this sort of... Uh, this and Halo, the original Halo Combat Evolved, were kind of the... Uh, the first video games that realized, man, Aliens was a really good movie and a really good concept for a video game. We should make an Aliens video game. Because that's essentially what this feels like when it starts off. Outstanding. Like, this feels like you're maneuvering, you know, right space marines around. It's, mm, actually, that's, well, that's probably not quite fair. Go, go, go. It's somewhere in between... Um, it's somewhere between aliens and what was the other one? The one with the giant bugs. Uh, because that's definitely the Zerg definitely feel like that occasionally. But they're more like space dinosaurs in this one. Uh, Starship Troopers, yeah, it feels like Starship Troopers, kinda. Go go go. Which is not really a bad thing, because you know. That's a pretty co that's a pretty fun concept for a game. Go, go, go. And they did experiment. They got this really cool stuff here, like all these are two D sprites. But then you have stuff like this, which I don't think is three D. They've mm. if it's not if it, it, I don't think it's three D, but they fake it really well. How am I doing? I have a full squad here. They also jacked up the. Uh, they also jacked up the squad size from Star from uh, Warcraft One or Warcraft Two from nine to twelve, which fits a lot better with uh, well, just about every system in the game. Something I lamented in the uh, Warcraft Two videos was that you can only have six people in a squad in, in actually enter your transport shift uh, and transport vessels. You still only have a limit of six, but considering that the squads break into twelve. That means you have two ships, so, for one squad. Like a minor casualties, but I'd be surprised if we actually, uh, lost, like, uh, and I'd be surprised if we lost the rigor. We don't need to worry about being attacked on this level, we're just wiping out the, um, we're, we're just mopping up, essentially. So what I should probably do is build a refinery. And so that's things on the Terran side, essentially. At least how it starts out, is it feels very much like, uh, aliens, except, uh, you're playing... You're playing the Space Marines, and... Yeah. You play as a, a Magistrate, which is essentially, uh... Like a military commander for a small town-ish area. I believe. Or a, a military leader. A small area. But essentially, you're maneuvering military guys around like small outposts and stuff. No, no time, no cities or anything. The refinery processes raw vespine gas, converting it into a form which your SCVs can gather. Mm -hmm. Now you might be you might be uh, noticing some similarities with uh, with uh, Warcraft 2 right off the bat. 
which is that this Terran refinery is essentially a gold mine in pretty much every single way that functions, except that you can only have one SCV in there at once. And the SCV, it does need to go into the refinery, but it doesn't need to enter the uh, command center. It just drops stuff off. Up and good to go. These guys are much, much smarter, though. Like, get better the Warcraft 2, at the very least. Because if it were in Warcraft 2, they would have just gotten gummed up right here. Let me see. Oh, yeah. Another thing you might not have uh, realized right off the bat, but this game actually has different levels of, like, elevation and ramps. You can go up and, so you can go up and down. Uh, Warcraft 2 was very, very flat. Like, you had the trees, you had, you had hills, you had mountains, but you couldn't go up onto them. This one, you have the base level. You have up one and then down one, and they demonstrate this in the tutorial. And they have uh, this is your ocean sort of over here because we're on a space station. It's just space. Give me something to shoot. Jacked up and good to go. Standing by. Jacked up and good to go. We gotta move. Are you gonna give me orders? Oh my God, he's wet. I vote we frag this commander. How do I get out of this chicken shit outfit? You want a piece of me, boy? Mm -hmm. If it weren't for these damn neural implants, you'd be a smoking crater by now. Commander, jacked up and good to go. <laughs> Let me see. It's also a bit cyber... Well, no, no, it's not, not cyberpunk. It's sci-fi in that everyone has neural implants. Even even the, um... The, your your uh, adjutant here is extremely neurally implanted. Although, there's some questions there, because they start off in this game as looking very human. Except for, you know, all the tubes and wires and lights on their heads. And then later on they become much more robotic. I have no idea if they're gonna retcon that at some point, or if it's just like, nope, there's just a woman tied in there, and, and tubed up, and... Later on they decide, yeah, maybe we should just use robots for this. Or what, but, uh... Yeah. So what are, what are our actual objectives here? Three supply depots for fine. Oh, <laughs> okay. So this first video is going to be this tutorial on the first mission, because that'll give us the that'll give you a good idea of you know how the game you know runs and plays. And I'm going to look into the uh, the widescreen fix stuff. SCP, good to go, sir. These are essentially farms, by the way. You still have all, all the information the farms would give you here. Supplies to use, supplies provided, total supplies, supplies max. You don't have 200 units, or the approximate value of 200 units. There's some, there's some units that take up more than one, and some units that take up half of one, if I recall correctly. But approximately, you're gonna have, only have 200 units, including SCVs, uh, like base level combat units, uh, flying units, yeah. You can only have 200 things moving on screen per player. If I recall correctly, this, this game. This the equipment demonstration. There will now be a fully catered reception at Morisara Base. <laughs> if I recall correctly, you can have up to eight players in a game, which means theoretically, oh, eight times 200. Uh, you can have roughly. Theoretically, you could have roughly. Four, no, six, no. Uh, I'm tired. Uh, 1,600 units running around, in theory, if everyone made, like, baseline units, like, uh, like, marines and such. But that would, uh, in, in the game this was designed for, and in, in on systems this was designed for, my bad, that would just make this game run like ass. Also, I'm looking at this now. Okay, so it is, it is kind of randomized which parts are damaged more. This guy's a damaged head and left and right leg. This guy's a damaged left arm. Yeah. So that's cool. I didn't realize that. Shormung and Bird. This is the same thing as Warcraft 2. Like, like just, this is straight up the same thing. Bit stuttery, though. APM? Average player? I don't know.
Adjutant Online. Good evening, Magistrate. I'll fill you in on what's been happening. Confederate traffic has increased substantially within the system due to the recent protoss destruction of the Chao Sara colony. The Confederates have tightened security on all outlying systems, and it's likely that this colony would be locked down as well. An encrypted Confederate transmission came for you while you were at dinner. Replaying transmission. Greetings, Magistrate. I'm General Edmund Duke of the Confederate Security Forces Alpha Squadron. The Confederacy has quarantined this entire planet, and we'll proceed with a lockdown within 48 hours. You're to relocate your core colonists to the outlying wastelands. Now, I know there won't be any problems with these new arrangements. Transmission ended. I have contacted the local marshal, James Rayner. Rayner has agreed to meet your personnel en route and escort them to the new wasteland site. Alright. So. Yeah, this is a little bit of how it all runs. You're, uh, you're a dude, you're running stuff, and, uh, yeah. And if you know anything about StarCraft, you might have recognized the name there, Rainer. We're gonna go meet him now. So the Confederacy is, again, how it started off, is Space Australia. It's, uh... I wish one of the SCVs in there, actually. There we go. Right there. Is, uh... They're the government that took control, and basically... It basically was formed out of those original colony ships. I really like the, uh, how they dictate the lighting, or uh, how much you can see in this. You cannot disable the Fog of War without cheats, by the way, so. Fog of War is now a thing, it's going to remain a thing for the future from, uh, here on. Which is why I was kind of confused when I had the as an option in Warcraft 2. But, uh... Yeah, Confederacy has some major problems, being that they're an XP of the American South during the Civil War. They're not even, like, subtle about it. They, they, they're a straight-up confederate flag on the, uh, on the, uh, in, in the intro. Well, when I think about it, I think this game had another intro. Maybe there's a trailer? Where it was a, uh, it was a satellite with the confederate flag? I don't remember on that. It might actually be a cutscene in this. Go, go, go. But there is a cutscene with the confederate flag on a satellite. And it's just, yep, that's kind of their thing. And, you know, there's something I can say about that. Uh, political allies, but no, no, and not the place for it. Yeah, here we go, here's Rainer. Perfect timing. Rainer here. Howdy, boys. I'm Jim Rainer, Marshal of these parts. So something I really like about this game is, uh, they introduced the, the thing where the units will actually talk and chatter with each other uh, during missions. It's all scripted, of course, but it's very well scripted, considering that Warcraft 2 is it's like dead silent, except for the actual briefing. And, you know, the unit's general command, or general confirmation stuff. Now, we actually, Rainer is a hero unit, as you can recognize from the uh, trademark teal coloring on them. But he's actually kind of an interesting one, because he starts off... He's, he's very forgiving as a hero unit, because you cannot heal marines in this game. They're, they just can't. All health, all damage they take is just permanent. They fixed that in the expansion, Brood War, but we'll get to that when we get to that. But Rainer here is in this thing called a... fuck, what's it called? Essentially, he's like driving this motorcycle kind of thing. And it's this, uh... And because it's a mechanical... Because he's a mechanical unit at the moment... 
he can be repaired. So really, it's kind of in your best interest to have him do all your scouting, because he's also a hell of a lot faster, being that he's on a motorcycle. And he also does a fuck ton of damage, because, you know, he, he has this kind of crazy can launcher thing. Ooh, boy, okay. That's a bit much, though. So, like, for a little skirmishing and scouting, you want to use Rainer for these early parts. Should probably get these guys, you know. Okay. No Vespian guys right away, okay. sir. I'm good supply wise, but mm, no, no. Not enough minerals. So we're gonna have these guys working. I think only one SCV can work one mineral field at a time. So you're gonna want as many SCVs as you have mineral fields. But that should probably cap out at 12... Eh, no, that should cap out at 12 total SCVs in case you need to select them all and get them, make them run. So, probably... Oh, I don't know... Five... Yes, five Vespian Geyser, five Mineral, one Builder, and one Repair Unit. But, you know, this yeah, play around with but, uh, whatever works for you. Plus, very nice is Rainer has a sail line that's a bit further than that of the Zerglings out here. Sounds fun. Zerglings. This is Jimmy. But yeah, he's good for like groups of one and two. Checked up and well, the thing about Zerglings is they travel in groups. For duty. Oh wow, that is happening faster than I remember it happening. Okay. Something else I like about this game is when you build stuff. They actually, uh, they don't just disappear into this. These, uh, SCVs, they'll hang around and they'll actually, like, like, uh, weld bits around the outside. And you can select them individually while they're building and tell them to go somewhere else. Mid-construction, so you just have half constructed buildings. And they go back there and you'll, you'll uh, go back to work, you'll go back to working on it. The thing about the Terrans is they can also repair their buildings when they get damaged. So, if someone, if a bunch of Zerglings ran over here and busted up this building a bit, you know, Terrans can walk over and fix it up. Well, the SUVs can, anyway. This bit hasn't changed, there's still the, uh, the red outlines for, uh, where you can and can't put stuff. Standing by. I read you. This is Jimmy. And I'm going to continue using the same building practices I used before, where everything is one space away from itself, one space away from everything else, so you can move units in between them. Yeah. Now, while I'm doing this, well, maybe I should wait until the barracks are done, but I figure I should demonstrate this, is uh, the turn buildings also have another very unique ability, which is that... Uh, being that they're designed, uh, being that they're designed by basically a scavenger species, go humans. They're meant to be, uh, uh, they're meant to be well, mobile. Pick them up and they'll fly around. You also tell it to land, you know, just wherever you need to land. But essentially, yeah. So if you ever get into a big fight, if a huge swarm of Zerglings came in and just started wrecking shop, I could tell, well, I could tell the barracks in the command center, lift off, they won't be able to touch them. And I like that the SCVs just automatically go right back to uh, drop enough minerals. Infantry units such as Marines can be trained at this facility. Ooh, Marine counter. So let's see what uh, F10... Oh, pfft. <laughs> That's my uh, end recording button. That might be an issue. Uh, yeah, I'll look into that. Right. Submission so objectives. About oh, ten marines. Now, so we don't even need to worry about the uh, zerglings around here. I don't think there's anywhere to go anyway. Just need ten marines. So something else this game does is uh, you can actually queue up. Well, and two things actually is you can set rally points. So I select this here, 
And now every unit this, this building trains goes over there. The other thing you can do is you can queue up how many uh, units you want built up to a maximum of five. So I told that thing, train me five marines. And it's going to train me five marines one at a time. As soon as it's done, you want a piece of me, boy? he goes over here. This is a really, really small change, but it is, it, and it's a majorly quality of life thing. It's really basic, but it makes such a difference between Warcraft uh, 2 and this. I'm just gonna keep going. I'm, I'm just gonna start calling it Warcraft. You want to do me, boy? Yes, sir. I'm gonna fix it, Rainer. Hold on, I got it. Rainer here. You see, Rainer can also lay down these things called spider mines. Which are, well, let's, this should be good. let's lay one down here. You want a piece of me, boy? Which is essentially... Essentially that... Ah, Vulture. That's there. That's what they're called. He's driving around a Vulture. Essentially, this is a landmine. Go ahead, Commander. And... I don't know if those replenish... Or if he just has a maximum of three at the start. But their trick. Let's go annoy these airplanes. Sounds fun. Now, if uh oh, they have a huge range too, I don't this worry about that. But if uh for instance someone spots that and they decide, oh shit, we should run. Hello. Uh the, Sp the Spider-Man actually chase them until it blows up, or, well, I think they go off after 30 seconds anyway. Not 30 seconds, 10 seconds? Something like that. They go off eventually on their own, but they will chase after units after a while, and they are fast. If that Zergway just turned tail right there, he still would not have made it. Yeah. Garm Brood. So, I'm going to get into the next mission briefing here, and... Well, actually... We'll go into it. If it's a if it's a cutscene, we'll watch the... Well, no, because the cutscene will be good. No. I'm going to end it here, and uh, next episode we're going to pick up and see whether it's a cutscene or what, and then we're going to do the next mission. So, yeah. Uh, I don't know if the music is going to fade out like it does in Warcraft, but, um... Hopefully it does, because that's going to make this a lot, less, a lot more jarring if I don't, if it doesn't. And while I wait for the fade out, let's, uh, talk about the background here. How cool it is with the big planet in the background. And this game loves showing us off the huge planets in the background. And the crazy space marines. If all the, uh, all the detail on the armor using shotguns, which is a bit odd considering it sounds like they're pretty definitely using saw rifles. All the tubes and stuff. They, they, this is the, uh, the helmet design is actually really cool because they have like uh, the power armor is basically this huge bulky frame and the helmet is not actually a helmet, it's like a port that slides back with multiple sections of it sliding back. One's like a clear visor for uh, when they need a when they need to cover their face but they also want other people to see their face so, you know, it's basically just a normal astronaut suit. And then they'll have an opaque visor that also slides over the top of that. And then these two up here are flashlights. They just flick on. You don't see any of this in this game. I think you might kind of see them in the cutscenes. But for the most part, this is all just design that doesn't actually get used at all until StarCraft II. And that's one of the things I, will, I do like uh, about StarCraft II. And I don't think the music is going to fade out, so this is going to be kind of jarring. Apologies. But yeah, next episode, we're going to do something with Rainer. I think we might meet Kerrigan, but it feels really early for that.